Hey everyone, Benny here, and welcome to video 2 of the series. And in this video, we're going to be looking at logic gates again. Except this time, we're looking at them completely differently. Last time, I just sort of showed them to you so that you'd really you'd know what they are. We I didn't really go over how they work together to make all the parts work. We will look at that in this series, by the way, in case you're wondering. But I just want to look at them differently. Look, we'll give them from more of a design standpoint. So, in video one of building a Minecraft computer tutorial, we had these three. The NOT gate, the AND gate, and the OR gate. And this is the exact design I used for them. So there you go. NOT AND and OR. And I'll just get two inputs. There we go. So these are our three logic gates. <clears throat> and of course, hopefully you know how these work, like AND is both on, OR is both off, or it doesn't give an output, or and all the usual logic gate stuff. So now let's look at them from more of a a bit of a design standpoint. And yeah, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna look at the three big things, function, speed, and size. And we're going to assess how it is in each of these gates, and then we're going to go over some of the problems with that. And hopefully by the end of this video, you'll be absolute master of logic gates. So, first of these things is function. And I don't mean the truth table. We're not, about, it's not just about the measurement. Yeah, that's how you measure it. But I mean, there's a function. Like, even things I said couldn't be measured by truth tables, like, for example, a CPU. The CPU still has a function. It processes information. It's just you can't really represent processing information on a truth table. So we will have truth tables so that we can have a more, I guess, mathematical way of analyzing things. But we're still going to have the, I guess... Well, I'm not really sure of the word for it, but I think you understand what I mean. I'm I'm sorry. I can't think of the word, but oh well. I think practical was yeah, it was practical was the word I was looking for. I'm sorry. I I couldn't think of it, but oh well. So the not gate. The whole reason well the not that's actually a best place to start. I'm gonna start with the or gate. The purpose of the or gate is well <coughs> one moment. The OR gate is a way of combining two wires. And there is there are multiple ways of combining two wires, but the OR gate is one of the simple ones. The, the way the OR gate works is it combines two wires by saying if either of these are receiving power, then the output wire is receiving power. So, if I wanted to, I could make an OR gate like this and be exactly the same. It's combining two wires. If either one is receiving power, then the, the output wire receives power. That's the function of an OR gate. It's, and that's also the reason it's called an OR gate. If input A or input B, then we get an output. There you go. Now, that's the OR gate. Now the AND gate. The AND gate's a differ. The AND gate is sort of the inverse approach of handling... I'm sorry, I was looking at the sun. It's the inverted approach of the OR gate. The OR gate says, yeah, if any of them are on, just send the power straight through. But the AND gate says, no, 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 no. If all of them are on, then I send it through. So the AND gate is sort of like the inverse of an OR gate, in a sense. Because it's just a different way of combining two inputs. So if both of them are on, and only if both of them are on, only then does it send the power through. And that's the purpose of an AND gate. Now, the in the NOT gate, also known as the inverter, it has a... Hmm, how should I put this? Well, I'll just say this. The real purpose of the NOT gate is pretty much what it says on the tin. It just, it's a way of knowing the opposite of whatever the power is, of whatever the input is. So, uh oh, that's really the main purpose of the NOT gate. I will, I was going to, but I'm going to do that later. We'll get into why knowing the opposite of something is so powerful in a little bit of a later video. So that's the practical function of these. And 
and yeah. So now we know all the functions, but now let's go over the speed. And so now, remember how we do this? We already did the AND gate, so we know that. Two. I'm pretty sure we already did the NOT gate, too, so that's a one. OR gate, they both go into the same torch, so there's one, two torches, and that makes two ticks. So we have a one tick gate, a two tick gate, and another two tick gate. But of course, we also did just say a little bit earlier that an OR gate can also be built like this. So really, an OR tick could be a zero tick gate, if you wanted to. So really, it's whatever you prefer. And But actually, it's not always what you prefer. I should, should not say that. There are some cases where you need very specific types of these gates built. And this right here is just the more formal version of the OR gate. If you want a really simple version of an OR gate, and, and there's plenty of cases where you do, you could just have a repeater or just connect them like I did before. But anyway, that's enough about the OR gate. So, these are the typical speeds in their typical design. And the reason this is important is because if you're ever designing your own version of any device, it's important to know what the standard version is, because if yours has lacking in a certain area, then people will be less inclined to use your design. A and that's, that's why it's important to know this. If it is, it's sort of like a benchmark. If you're ever building your own AND gates or gates or whichever, or maybe an adder, or maybe an XOR, anything. You generally want to know the standard, because if you want to build your own, you want to build it at least that good or better. So, yeah, that's the reason we're looking at this. Now, size. An, an hot gate, one block wide, one block high, two blocks deep, because torches count as blocks. So, it's a total of two in volumetric space. So, a and gate. It is two blocks, excuse me, three blocks wide, two blocks high, and two blocks deep. So that's a total of 12, I think, volumetric space. 12 blocks of volumetric space, and now there's the OR gate, which is, hmm, excuse me. This one is two blocks high, two blo three blocks deep. So that's six blocks in volumetric space. Those are all the sizes, and if you don't get any of this information, don't worry, I'm posting it for everything we do in every video. We're going to have this information in the description. And I'm sorry, I stopped and thought a moment, I decided that I'm going to go ahead and explain why the inverse of something is so important. So, first off, let's look again at the NOT gate. Now, we know that the NOT gate will turn off if its input is off. Right? So if we plug a NOT gate into a NOT gate, then the second NOT gate will never turn on. If you plug two NOT gates into a NOT gate, then both NOT gates have to be off. And if you notice, we've really essentially just gone through two logic gates just from that. First logic gate's an OR gate, if you just have one NOT gate plugging into the input. And the second one is an AND gate, or not an AND. Yeah, an AND gate, excuse me. And it's all done by just manipulating what goes in to a NOT gate. So, that's why the inverse is so absolutely critical to us, because you can create absolutely powerful operations with it. The unfortunate downside to this, though, is most people forget that <laughs> it's still... They do really stupid things because they think, oh, I have to do it all with logic gates. They don't bother spending time to do something slightly more efficiently. Like, for example, if I have an AND gate like this, I say, you know, I want this first input to be inverted. Well, the very first thing they're going to think to do is this. And does it work? I mean, yeah. But, um, you're might notice a bit of an inefficiency here. You, and I gave you a moment to help people you notice it, but you could just do this. And now, you have the exact same thing, except, there we go. It's a lot quicker because we aren't doing two needless inversions. If I wanted both of these inverted for some reason, then there we go. Now, that almost that turns us into a NOR gate, actually. But, yeah. There you go. 
So, oh, see, these are just silly ways people are inefficient about things. And again, it's why the inverse wire is so important. Remember, it might it's part of a gate, but it's still a wire. Use it. Now we've made a NAND gate by just doing all the inversions. And if we wanted, we could just undo every single inversion, and now we have a regular OR gate. <laughs> so there's also a quick overview of how all the gates are related. And that's um really all I wanted to go over in this video. So this was all, I think this is going to be all the introductory type videos. I think the next video is going to be us really getting into the heart of designing some things. So yeah, thank you. See you all in the next video.